Okay, so tonalism is kind of defined by a limited color palette. Generally, you're painting um, landscapes, um, and then it's it's brought together by the use of value, um, not necessarily using color to dictate depth and perspective, but value. I'm going to start off. This is going to be a fairly cool uh, palette. I think I'm going to use uh, probably three colors: um, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, and set green. Maybe four. I might throw in some paints gray. Uh, one of the first things <clears throat> that I want to talk about is the use of uh, perspective. So, uh, so, so first of all, when you're looking at your composition, composition that, or your canvas composition is a really good thing to keep in mind. Uh, I like to work, I try to work in the rule of thirds, so it's when, you, when you're dividing your canvas up into thirds, and then your subject matter, your main point of interest is usually in here, uh, focusing around one of these, one of these points. Generally speaking, that's not necessarily always the case. So then, what I want to do is I'm gonna have my, this is gonna be my horizon line. What I'm, my goal for my horizon line is gonna be. And then up here, uh, I'm gonna have some, some clouds going on. You just get something in, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, because one of the other things that, that we often forget is the use of perspective and the perspective is how things go into the distance. So, I mean, you can look at it like, like this, like if you have this as a vanishing point, a vanishing point. So a point where everything converges into a point of nothingness. So something something like that, and the same thing goes on for for this for the for the sky as well. And as things get closer to the viewer, things are going to get going to get larger. And as things get further away from the viewer, like this for example, lines get closer together versus something that may be closer to you. The distance between here and here is perceived larger than the distance between here and here, just because it's farther away. So it's just something to keep in mind as you're, as you're developing your, your composition. So I know right now this looks like a bunch of squiggles and just trying to demonstrate uh, something as that can be understood. Um, I, I sometimes do an underpainting like this. <clears throat> if you want to call this an underpainting, I mean, we can we can really get in here and just start, you know, adding some tone and value. I started off by I want to be painting for roughly a year, a little over a year, and uh, uh, I started off by just doing a bunch of Bob Ross tutorials and learning from. I'm learning from that. Um, but what I want to do now is I'm just getting color up here. Not worrying about brush strokes. I just want color. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm grabbing a bunch of oil. Actually, it's a, it's, it's a linseed oil, odorless paint that are mixed together, uh, about a 50-50 ratio. And I'm thinning out my paint And just applying it, just haphazardly onto the onto the canvas. Um, I'm going with I want to go uh, dark to light. The closer you get to your horizon, the lighter things get. Uh, also, it's because of again perspective. Remember how we talked about this and the things that are closer to you. Obviously, going to be towards the top of your canvas. And the bottom of your canvas and the horizon line will be the distance that things are furthest away with the 
value and contrast being in the things that are closest to you. And as things go farther away, they are of less contrast and take on more of the color in the environment. So I started by priming my canvas uh, with a couple of layers of, of gesso, white gesso. And then I just threw on some oil uh, when I was done, just to kind of just to kind of prime it a little bit. And I'm grabbing, you probably noticed I've got a couple of different colors going on here. This is the, the Thalo Lou and this is the Burnt Sienna. Uh, I'm, again, this is about value and a limited color palette. So choose what you want. Choose what you want. I mean, as long as it makes sense, colors don't really matter. The value's gotta read. stuff out is tough and then make a little bit more sense. Taking some of the extra paint off of the canvas in the meantime. Filling it in. And you can see the majority of my paint up here at the top is why it's darker and then it gets lighter as it comes down here to the bottom. I'm just using a paper towel, just coming through and start putting in my putting in my values where I, where I think I'm gonna want them. Looking at things as shapes and forms. And then we'll go through here and uh, start giving things breathing a little, breathing a little bit of, a little bit more life into it. <clears throat> so this is the start of of my cloud, and you can kind of see this is the part that's going to be closer to the viewer. It's going to go up. It's getting more getting more attention here it gets down it starts getting covered in mist and then we're going to go into the landscape and watch all of this kind of come together I hope at least to start anyway uh, so just like I did the, the sky and I grabbed the phthalo blue and the burnt sienna I'm going to go with uh, burnt sienna sap green and a little bit of paint spray <clears throat> and I'm going to go right in here and just start putting in shapes and then eventually I'm going to be working into the sky area to use a, a, a larger brush now these are not expensive brushes it's just cheap just crap brushes um, but they're nice broad fairly thin to give you the give you rough control uh, which is what you want you don't want and well at least with the style of painting you don't necessarily want it detail control. It's implied, implied detail. And you'll see as I go along, a lot of this stuff, it just, it just happens. And all these little, 
all these little dots and specks and things as a it just looks like it's something it tricks your mind into thinking that it's something and then again as as we get closer to the foreground I'm going to go I'm, I'm switching to less burnt sienna sap green and more paints gray and sap green because I want it to be I want it to be darker Now, once this is done, um, you let it dry, and then you can go through and and glaze it, and and bring out highlights, add additional colors, and turn your brush as you go along. You can kind of see in here how uh, the, the, your brush strokes help add to that implied detail. For the back things go, the uh, smaller they're going to get. And I've got other brushes, smaller brushes that I may use. I probably will use. I'll bring them out to uh, bring them out to uh, put in some of the, the this deep, more detailed stuff on the horizon. some of these some of these lines that you see going across these horizontal lines just kind of break them up the splatter of your brush is just again this is all implied and if you don't like something just rub it out to paint over stuff because you can always go back over it. No, of course it's a little bit too wet. That's fine. I'll just you don't want it so wet that it does that. Well, you can see that on the camera. Got a little bit too much solvent on my brush. A little too much oil and it just started to run. That's fine. Just take it off. Just come back in here and get some more paint and we'll put it back on. And then just using a paper towel, you can come in.
and just start taking off some paint, blending some paint in. Like as we get closer to the horizon, like we said, you know, the further things back things go, the uh, lighter things are gonna get. So right here, like this piece right here and this piece right here, they're fighting against the, 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 the value of the horizon. So let's, if you lighten things up, let's use a paper towel, take a few swipes and then, and then refold it. And then you can see those, those shapes become a little bit more prominent there and there. You can do that with paper towel. You can use, for things that are on the horizon, you can use a smaller brush. This is a just a, uh, an in, inexpensive um, bristle brush. Um, fairly dry, I might dip it in a little bit of solvent depending on how much paint I want to take away. It's running across there, and you can, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's a little bit lighter of a line, adding to another layer of depth. So I make a couple swipes, wipe off your brush. Using that same small brush, I can go into the mid ground here, picking up some of the mid ground color, which looks like it's the uh, sap green in, in burnt sienna. And using the same kind of strokes as what we do with the big brush, to start breaking up some of those horizontal lines that we put in. You know, the further back you go, the more you're going to see. So, some of these things here, we've, like this one, for example, we only see like maybe one or two of them here in the foreground on this side. Back here, we see a much more broad idea of what they uh, what they are. Okay, so now uh, for the for the extreme foreground, I want to put in some foliage that maybe off screen, maybe this part down here. So I'm just taking a paper towel and just winding it really tight like this. And then I'm just going to whip it. And this is just giving me, it's using the, the loose wet paint that I have on the canvas and it just cuts right through it. gives me the, the illusion of more vegetation, more detail. You don't have to do it everywhere, just here, there, wherever you think it may be. You can use a, uh, a palette knife. some additional lines. Again, these are just looks like detail, but it's not really. It's just implied that your mind's gonna make out of it what it wants to. Some of this vegetation here that's close, I'm just gonna take a paper towel, piece of paper towel, and I'm just going to 
I could crumple it up big enough to work with, something like that. And you need to decide where your light source is, is going to be. Um, I may treat I may treat this uh, as a source of light, or the light source is probably going to just be off off screen. Uh, the way some of the shadows just kind of naturally fill in, it makes it feel like it's more overhead. So we'll treat the light source as that. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to dab on some of the things that are just dab. I don't know if you can see that on screen, but it just lightens it up. And you move, it moves some of this from one point to another. So it's like you're drawing additional leaves when, you're, when your paper towel gets too saturated. You're going to have to you're going to have to refold it. I had some extra paint that felt like it was going to run there. I made it too loose, but that's okay. Now, when you're doing this, you don't want to get it so light that you're that you're now con, uh, fighting with the the, the mid ground. So keep that in consideration as you're doing this. And again, only go with the, the parts that are being hit by the light. Don't go, one of the, th the problems I always had, had with Bob Ross, it was like everything was so evenly lit, um, regardless if the light source was over here, or even this side of the tree would have highlights on it. Uh, don't do that. Pay attention to where your light sources are It will make all of the difference. There you go. Just make some swipes here and there, pulling some color across. Dab, dab. Dab, dab. Even here, the dark areas just start taking some stuff away. Um, again, just makes it feel like it's implied implied detail here and there. Okay, now we're going to go up here to the sky. We're going to work on the clouds a little bit. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is in pretty good uh, shape right now. Um, I like how the, uh, the burnt sienna is kind of coming in there right across the horizon. Um, it almost makes me feel like it's a sense. I mean, we just talked about light source being up here or over, over off screen or off canvas, but uh, I still like that separation between the, the, the landscape and the sky, the, the light glow, the environmental glow. So we're gonna go in and the first thing I want to do is I want to start pulling in some white up here. I know you see, we have the canvas is already white. Yeah, but I'm going to add some white and what that white's going to do is going to start pulling in some of this surrounding color. So let's use some titanium white straight out of the tube. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to thin this with anything more than any solvent that I have on my brush that I just that I just cleaned. And I'm just gonna come right in here and I'm just gonna rub it in. And then this is just essentially I'm 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 blocking in just blocking in color.
one of the things that I want, I want to be sure that this cloud is getting darker as I, as I go down. So I may start introducing some other, some other colors to it. I may start introducing a little bit more of the uh, Prince Sienna, Prussian blue mixture, just to, what that's going to do, what that's going to do is it's going to help push this back and help define uh, a ceiling uh, for the cloud, a cloud ceiling, which kind of gives us this, this point that comes down in this point, this point. It's kind of like if you have a plane, uh, a piece of paper and, and you just hold it at a certain uh, angle and then everything above it is just standing up or even a box. Imagine a box, you're holding a box up here. At a certain angle, you can see the bottom of the box and you can see the side of the box. Well, this would be like the side of the box and this down here would be like the bottom of the box. The bottom of the box, if the light source is over here or up here somewhere, is going to be, it's going to be darker and it's going to cast shadow on, on certain areas of the land. Kind of helps to find that a little bit. I'll go through and I'll, that'll get that'll get lightened up some, but still, it kind of gives you a better idea. Just exaggerating some of that a little bit. Just wipe off the brush some. So there's that. Soften the whole thing. No, I'm not softening it like this. I'm not going straight into the canvas. I'm, I'm more, it's more of a using the side. down here, I'm moving more, more of a side-to-side -side motion, because again, with that whole perspective thing, um, as the same way we did the land, the closer it gets to the horizon, the kind of closer the lines tend, tend to get to each other, same kind of thing. You're just kind of working in reverse. At this point, I don't care if blue is getting mixed in with my clouds here and there. I'm going to go through and we'll put um, additional highlights and we'll work more light and dark into this. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just uh, fluffing it, kind of bringing it, bringing it all together. I have, I have a two inch brush. Uh, that you can use. I, I find it's, uh, this is one of the, uh, the 
Bob Ross brushes, it's uh, uh, natural bristles. Um, I find for, for trying to smooth out areas, uh, getting rid of brush strokes, it works a little bit better than, uh, than the, 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 the cheap brushes that I was showing you with before. Um, same motion, but it just, it just blends nicer. So I'm just using that right now. Again, I'm, I'm not too worried about um, mixing the color, getting the blue and the white mixed together. I'm more, I'm more trying to just get everything as smooth. I don't want to see bits of canvas peeking through because of a brush stroke. Now, what I think I want to do is I want to concentrate a little bit on some highlights. So I'm just using a palette knife. Again, we said, we said that the, uh, the light source is going to be over here somewhere. So thinking about this as shapes, and each one of these things, thinking about them as like a, a ball. I'm just going to put some stuff on there. Again, it's just titanium white. Costco, off your canvas, people. Um, these aren't necessarily meant to be, you know, finished clouds at this point either. I mean, we're just throwing on some color, some paint just to kind of get it up there. dark in some places too, I think. Again, limited color palette. So it, the, the colors of the thing, we're not going for photorealistic imagery. You're like, well, why are you putting burnt sienna in the sky? It's the value is what I'm going after. I mean, it's not, it's not anything more than that. Uh, you can use any color palette that you want. Um, you have darks and lights, and and that's what that's what matters. You can green in the sky if you really wanted to. I mean, but what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to help define the shapes with with the value. I mean, this feels a little, little tall to me. I mean, bring some of this white down a little bit closer to the horizon. Because what I kind of want is, I want it nice and, nice and bright. Right on the horizon there. And don't worry about painting right through some of your, of your stuff. You can always go back and put it back in. It's not that big of a deal. And also keep your lines uh, fairly straight. I mean, you don't have to follow the, the curvature of the horizon. The sun and the sky, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way.
smooth some and then and then clean your brush. Initially when you're doing this, you're just trying to get the color done like, like we talked about. So there's not a whole lot of need for cleaning your brush at that point. Just get the color on there. But now as you're trying to get these things blended and soften them up, you want to color, you want to spread color, spread color around too much. Again, it's going side to side. This is the stuff that's in the perspective. It's going farther away, farther away, farther away. softness, blending colors, pushing things back. So I'm using this, this blue, this dark value here to kind of bring this piece right here forward a little bit and pushing this piece back. Try to work from the, the yin and yang of values, right? So you go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. He's constantly breaking that up and moving it around. Uh, even this right here, we have you no know, dark, light, dark, and light on the horizon. Then we go dark and light and dark and light and dark. Just keep it going back and forth. Maybe what this is in here. We have a lot of bounce light. Environmental bounce light is, is big and it's something to pay attention to. Uh, so what this bounce light may be is this is this light that's coming in and bouncing off of the earth and just hitting the bottom of the clouds again. So we'll just put that on there. Wipe off the brush a little bit and just soften that right up.
And then this stuff back here, this stuff can just be clouds. I mean, that's like way off in the distance. circles. Let it be spontaneous. Come back up here to the sky in a little bit. Just bounce around. You don't want to spend too much time working on one specific thing. You'll get lost in the you get lost in the details of it, and and then the next thing you know, your your whole composition or your whole painting is off uh, off balance. Uh, you, you've spent too much time working in a specific area and uh, completely neglected another. And sometimes things like this happen. That's pretty that's pretty cool. I like the explosiveness. Of a of a clouds. Let me just soften it up a little bit, and then we can come back in with more highlights and pure whites and things like that. And now I want to go back here and I want to put some of that foliage back on the back on the horizon so I'm gonna go back in um, a little bit more oil back on my on my canvas grab some sap green burnt sienna tiny bit of paints gray Here. Just break it. Just break the, the horizon line. Work it into the color of the background. Touch, 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 way on the distance there. It's way off there. It's going to start. The more, th the further things are in the distance, the more they take on the color of the environment. It's not that they just get lighter. In this case, the environment is influenced by the color of the sky. So the further things go into the distance, the more it takes on the color of the sky, which in this case is the, the primarily blue, blues and whites. And it's, I think it's a fairly accurate statement that can be used whenever, um, even at nighttime, the environment uh, is extremely dark. Further things back, further in the distance things go at nighttime, the darker they're going to get. They're going to lose contrast and they're going to take on the color of the environment, which was dark. In this, further things back they go, uh, they're going to lose contrast because the further things go back they lose contrast and take on the color of the environment, which in this case is the, the blues and the lights. So they're going to this color, working this color up, just scrubbing it a little bit up into uh, that sky color, uh, it helps incorporate some of that stuff and it adds that illusion of depth. So you don't need a lot of, a lot of 
detail. Let's bring it down a little bit. See, just like that. Use my bigger brush. Come back in here to this one. Dab, dab, dab. Push, push, push. Now, I don't want to bring so much sky color into that one, like it's showing up there. So I want to make sure that I go over that and make sure I darken that up, get a nice color that I want. And then again, we can go over that with the uh, paper towel and kind of dab and get some foliage texture. On the top, so light source is coming down. And we also, light source is coming down. Shadows are underneath here, so we'll scrub a little bit of the shadows in, plant those, flatten the ground with those things, give them a base, give them a foot. some of these horizontal lines that are going on here. Let's use the brush, the scrub, push, push on the canvas. Create those, create those twigs and bushes and bits of foliage and organic things that just happen. Little, little grass bits. Closer. Use a bigger brush. Things are going to get bigger as they get closer to you. Make sure you give them a foot. Now, I may come back in after this is dry and, and give it a, a, a glaze, work over uh, some of these spots here in the background, um, putting on some color and just wiping it off uh, as, to not, um, as to not interrupt the values. You want the values to, to remain constant. I mean, we work this almost, almost like uh, treating this as an underpainting. And then we can even go on and, and additionally put on some, some more contrasting highlights if we need to. Like this part right here, it feels, uh, it's still very dark behind it. And I want to 
make sure that that comes out. So we may put some some highlights on these on these bushes here. But uh, I think that's pretty much it for for this one, at least for right now. Uh, I want to give this a chance to set up before I go in and, and apply more highlights and work on the sky a little bit more. Um, because I, I like how that is. I just want to accentuate some highlights and maybe and maybe some darks a little bit without interrupting the entire thing. So that's it. Thanks for thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.